I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. And this week, our topic for stress mastery will be despair and grief energy. On the weekend edition of Stress Mastery Podcast, host Mark Middlestead kicked it off with The Rock Bottom Life. Yesterday's Monday with the Super Millennial, David did an episode on Everyone Has a Choice. Today's Health Huddles, we're going to talk about living in a state of coherence in mind-body, body-mind connection. In this week's Meeting of the Minds, we're going to talk on the pause plan principle. And on Connection Thursday, we're going to discuss living from the heart. And on Friday, we will continue our book study, The Book of Joy by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. So this week, our topic is despair and grief energy. And today's health huddles, I will be discussing living the state of coherence in mind-body, body-mind connection. Before I get started, I will be doing solo today. David is on vacation. As you can see, I'm doing a solo episode today, but I want to give a quick reminder today at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, try to be there. It's a live class in the Stress Mastery community. It's class number three in the higher goal setting process. We're talking on setting the intention. This is a key component for the identity-based goals. And we'll be live at 3 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time. So we're talking this week on despair and the grief energy. And in our health huddles today, I want to talk a little bit about living the state of coherence. Now, I am going to tie in all week this particular message, because we're continuing talking a little bit about living in the heart. And we talk on grief. And if we look at grief, grief is a strong, sometimes overwhelming emotion. Most times people associate grief with the death of someone, but this will not be our focus. See, when someone passes on in our lives, we feel bereavement, which is deep grief that is involved when we have a death of a loved one. But we are looking at the energy and state of grief this week. See, the grief energy includes a variety of feelings that go along with any type of loss. Grief is a normal energy for the human being to experience anytime we lose something, lose someone. In fact, any loss will activate the grief energy. It is grief that we feel when we move on from any significant change or we experience any type of loss. So we look at the grief energies. They are blue, abandoned, abused, cheated, disappointed, unloved, sadness, pity, helpless, inadequate, torn, unwanted, rejected, misunderstood, sorrow, and regret, because the grief energies will tie in with the ego's regret program. So when you look these energies over, There's many levels, like every single energy of the red zone, there are different levels, different degrees, different intensities of grief. You can feel cheated and feel grief. You can just be disappointed and feel grief. The energy of grief is not a problem when we have the ability to process and let it go. Now, the state of grief is a whole different story. It's the state of grief when one gets stuck in the grief energies. And it's this 
that creates despair. When in despair, you will lose hope. This is the absence of hope. And this is what drops the individual deep into that ego's regret program. So the ego uses the regret program to pull your past into the present. And this is when people feel very sad and they go from grief to apathy. In apathy, they feel hopeless. And then they fall into guilt. In guilt, they just feel like they need to do something to fix it. Or they have beat themselves up and this can drop one into shame. It is shame where we can find suicidal depression. So many might be asking, why, Bill, would you choose a topic of despair and grief during the holidays, especially Christmas week? Well, truth be told, during the holidays, we will naturally reflect on our history. And we will reflect on those who are no longer with us. And this reflection is going to activate grief. During the holidays, grief energy seemed to work like an ocean, right? It comes in waves, ebbing and flowing. One minute you are calm, and the next minute you are activated. One minute you are happy, the next minute you are sad. Also, and this is really important, Many of us have this perception of how the holidays are supposed to play out. Hallmark, the Hallmark Channel begins showing holiday movies back to back. I think they start in July, but they're showing movies back to back. Every station is showing Christmas movies. And each one of these are creating a story of how the holidays are supposed to be. Everyone is happy and joyous. Everything, every single problem seems to work out during the holidays. The family should forgive and be loving during the holidays. Dinner should be perfect during the holidays. Presents should be perfect. Parties should be perfect. Tradition should be met in love. And everybody should be thankful. Well, that's a lot of shoulds. And all of this and more, including the advertisements we see on television, our history, our belief system, all of this sets expectations from the perception of should. And it's important to understand the very moment one of these shoulds is not met, the program gets activated in the cage mind. And this activation begins with the comfort zone. Number one, you get activated in fear. You become anxious, worried. The comfort zone has been hit. Then you move into two, desire. The wants get activated, driving you into frustration. And then three, anger gets activated. The resentment program, the ego uses the resentment program and activates your behavior in anger. And you go into a state of event, judgment, and reaction. And the resentment program begins to pull your entire history into your present moments. Now, this energy is very aggressive. And so, number four, this energy actually begins to dissipate and burn out. And what happens then? The pendulum swings into number five, and you fall into the regret program, and this activates the grief energies, and you move into sadness. And like I said earlier, then with the regret program, the ego will move you into apathy, which moves you into hopelessness, into guilt, which moves you into powerful regret. And here you might attempt to self-correct the behaviors, or you may just fall into despair. So I hope you can kind of see why I chose this topic of despair and grief energy. Because I want you to understand that if you fall into grief during the holidays, it's absolutely normal and it's easy to process and get out. That's what I'm going to talk about this week. So today's topic is living in a state of coherence. This is connecting my body, body, mind, for it's this connection in a conscious state that moves us 
out of grief and or despair. Now, today, I want to really give you the awareness behind everything we're going to teach this week, and that will come in Wednesdays and Thursdays episodes. See, last week, we began discussing the power of the heart, and we had a discussion on heart rate variability, HRV. And it's important to understand this because we talked last week on how HRV mirrors your life and the dominant state that you live in. And remember, there are only two states the human being exists in. There's the restriction state. This is a base energy of fear. And your vibration is set in event, judgment, and reaction. And then there's the expansion state with a base energy of courage. And this energy is set in event, awareness, and response. So to do a quick review on HRV, HRV, it is the measurement of beat-to-beat changes in the heart rate. And we understand now that the body supports the mind through the heart. We talked about it last week. And the heart's variance, its HRV, is supporting the nervous system activated. So the heart is working to maintain cardiovascular activity to the changing external conditions of the environment or the changing internal conditions of the mind. Now, the HRV is the synergetic action between the red zone, and the green zone nervous systems. The HRV is what determines your state of health. And understanding as we go into the holidays, our entire routine gets thrown off. That's why people get very stressed out during the holidays. They live in this perception, this cultural story of how the holiday should be. But the moment that that is not met, which is very unrealistic, by the way. It's not going to be met. This is why being very mindful during the holidays and the ability to slow down. And when I talk about tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the pause plan principle. You have to understand you cannot stop stress. We cannot stop conflict. Actually, we're talking on health huddles today. It's this is why stress management doesn't work because we can't stop stress. Remember stress mastery is developing the skill, the habit of conflict resolution. It is conflict resolution, the ability to slow down. It is moving out of red zone, judgment and reaction into green zone response, awareness and response. It's this conflict resolution that controls the HRV. You see, the HRV is a window that shows the function of your life. It shows the state you live in. It shows the state of your body. It shows the state of your mind. And it even shows the state of your spiritual connection to God, to your true self, to your purpose, to the superconscious mind. So when we talk about coherence, coherence is that connection to the heart. It's that connection of mind-body, body-mind connection. And the definition of coherence is the quality of being logical and consistent. So living in a state of coherence is stress mastery. It's the seven steps that we teach, the techniques that we teach, the principles that we teach. It is the diet and exercise that we teach. It's all about living in that state of coherence. Now, understand, we've talked about this in I don't know how many episodes we're at now. We're about 11, we're over 1100. But to change our lives, 
We must change our behavior. And it's your current behavior that has built your current reality. You don't change unless you change. Now, coherence is defined as a state of being logical. Do you realize that you cannot be logical from the mind? In other words, you cannot be logical from the head. You can only be logical in a state of coherence, which is connection to the heart and the creation mind. So the cage mind is what drives our behavior. The cage mind is what holds your conscious and subconscious mind. 95% of your behavior is coming from the cage mind. This is what holds your programs. This is what sets your perception. This is what throws us into expectation. And this is what the brain is working to always monitor that nothing goes against this perception and programming. So realize when we name something, when we name anything, we are giving it a label. The thing, the person, the situation, once given a label, becomes locked in your cage mind. Now, when this becomes locked in your cage mind, there cannot be logic. Logic is defined as reasoning conducted or assessed according to strict principles of validity. So the question is this. Through your mind, who sets your strict principles of validity? In other words, where does your truth come from? It comes from, your validity comes from the programs and belief systems that you hold in mind. It's not logical for me, for myself, to compete in a bodybuilding contest and to get into condition of a 5 to 6% body fat at the age of 60. See, it's not logical because science and studies show that the body in an aging process makes this an impossibility. Well, if I went by all the studies of aging, if I was logical, then I'm basically screwed on my goal. You see, behavior is driven through your cage mind. Being logical is put into the cultural stories and the programming that were given through the stages of development. And these programs are set to tell us what we can and cannot do. And many times the logical is what we can't do. You can't do this or that after a certain age. You can't accomplish this if you come from here? See, if you look at the science, really look at it, they'll tell you it's not logical to lose weight and keep it off and change your body after age 50. And this is validated by strict principles of science of physiology. And I'm telling you, this is just not true. You see, the moment we label anything, it's becoming locked into your cage mind. So I'm going to get deeper into this connection on, of, of the, how this works and how labeling works when we talk on living from the heart on Connection Thursday this week. You see, when we live from the heart, we live in a state of coherence. When we live from the head, we live in a state of disruption. Why? Because when we live from the head, we're living from our perception. If we're living from our perception, we must defend and attack anything that goes against it. This is what locks us into the red zone. This is what creates stress. When we live from the heart, we live in a state of coherence, and this is connection of head, heart, and hand. And it is only in this state, that the body can be in its optimal peak health. It is only in a state of coherence that the mind can respond and be aware. 
This is the state where we process grief. This is the state where you can let go of grief. This is the state where you can release despair. It's only in the state of coherence that the mind can respond and be aware. And it is only in the state of coherence that you connect to spirit. This is where you connect to your true self. This is where you connect to God. The state of coherence is the expansion state that we talk about. This is event awareness and response. It is the state when we find the now, we become mindful. You see, you understand when you're connected in a state, you cannot be in grief. Very important. That means you cannot be in grief, yet you can process grief. We Through the state of coherence is when we let go. It's when we release the old programs. It's when we raise our energy up. And I will discuss this even more detail in tomorrow's Meeting of the Minds when we talk about the pause plan response. So for today's Hell Huddles, let us dive just a little bit deeper into the state of coherence for optimal function. So when we hold positive thoughts, when we create positive talk, when we do positive affirmations, there is actually a huge shift in the body. And there's a shift in every single cell and processes that go on in the body. So as you are learning in stress mastery, every human being functions and operate and lives their life through the human construct. And part four of that construct is called the body identity. And this is based in truth. The body identity is set according to what you hold in mind. This is truth. The body supports the mind. When you become mindful, when you learn to slow down, when you find the now, when you become present, you take conscious mind control of the cage mind. This creates a state called psychophysiological coherence. This is head, heart, and hand. This is the positive green zone state of mind-body, body-mind connection. This is what puts us in the human construct in the identity base of event awareness and response. Now, this state of living, of being, of existing is characterized by increased order and harmony in our psychological state, harmony in our physiological state, and harmony in behavior and our emotional state. It is the heart connection done consciously. So when we look at the steps of stress mastery, diet and exercise are two very important steps. This is what controls the physiological stress response. We cannot shut off stress. And managing the body is essential if we want to move into this coherence, in this state of coherence. And so how do you know if you have the right diet and exercise, you have to look at the metrics of your HRV and your sleep data. It will tell you everything. Now, this heart connection done consciously is following the right diet and exercise routine for your physiology, your stress responder. So that's step one and two of stress mastery. Step three is name the ego. When you name the ego, and you can see the ego, and you can see that voice in your head, you automatically 
move into heart connection. When you use step four, the let go technique, you are going deep into heart connection. And this is increasing this state of coherence. When you do the green focus power hour, all six exercises are designed to create the skill and habits of heart connection. And this leads you into that step six. Step five is green focus power. Step six meditation is the exercise done to increase a stronger ability for heart connection. And that's what leads us into step seven and finding the now stress mastery. This is when you can slow down and this creates the psychophysiological coherence. Now, in this psychophysiological coherent state, the HRV has smooth patterns, and this creates a strong connection to the expansion state with the base energy of 200 courage and the green zone energies. Now, the red zone and the green zones are mastered through conflict resolution and life lived in the green zone, the parasympathetic nervous system. And we've talked about how when you connect to the heart, and to the green zone, the three brains are connected. And this creates a physiological entrainment, and the body and brain are in stasis. And they have perfect hormone communication. And every cell, every system is working to repair versus when we're stressed out in fight or flight, which takes place when we get locked in the red zone. So we're going to talk this week on how we can live our lives in this higher state of psychophysiological coherence. It's about living through the heart. And it all starts with understanding stress and conflict. You must understand the human being's mode of operation. We can never, ever stop stress or conflict. It's the hierarchy of the brain. So it's interesting because coherence is not relaxation. People believe to manage stress, they must simply relax. And let me explain quickly why this just isn't true. When we relax at a physiological level, we sleep, we rest, we meditate. These are characterized by an overall reduction in autonomic outflow. In other words, this is a shift into the green zone, the parasympathetic nervous system. And this sounds good, and it is. This is the process of getting proper sleep, but this is not managing stress. You see, coherence is associated with an increase of parasympathetic activity, green zone, but this is done in conjunction with synchronization in the nervous system with the sympathetic nervous system red zone and the parasympathetic nervous system green zone. In other words, it's conflict resolution. We cannot stop conflict. We cannot stop stress. The human being is hardwired for behavior, and this behavior is dictated by what is held in mind. If anything, absolutely anything enters the environment, Outside the perception of the programs held in mind, the brain will lock in the red zone. You see, this is what happens during the holidays. We get out of our routines. We get off our diets. We get our expectations not met. We get locked in the red zone. Now, coherence is our ability to move back into the green zone. This is stress mastery. It's the ability of going back and forth. You can't stop the red zone. You've got to be able to slow down and move into the green zone. And that is developing the skill of conflict resolution. This state of coherence is a physiological state. And when you live in this, that means you're going back and forth. That's the HRV that we look at. When you live in this state of coherence, this is when the body is healthy and balanced. And this week, I'll discuss this more as we talk about connection to the heart. 
Tomorrow, I'll dive into the pause plan principle and the techniques and tools to develop the ability to move through grief, despair, and move into peace. But we must understand as the holidays approach, and if you find yourself moving into sadness, you have to become aware of that. Use the techniques that you have been taught. Do not stop your practices of the Green Focus Power Hour. Make sure you set your day to go into the holidays. If you are suffering from depression, grief, despair, reach out, talk to somebody. If you're going in with great expectations, slow down and try to become present, become moment, get in a moment. If you feel these energies come up, get your journal out. Use the let go technique. Keep an eye on your ego. If overwhelm comes in, stop. Slow down and get into the right coherence. A lot of people get very sick after the holidays. Why? Because they get so locked into stress and it's so activated that their immune system shuts down. And by the time the holidays end, their adrenals are burnt out. I want you to all to enjoy the holidays. I didn't pick this topic of grief and despair to bring you down. It's quite the opposite. It's creating the awareness of how you pull yourself back up. Because I will tell you this as a fact, there's no way you're going to stop the conflict of the holidays. It's impossible. But you sure can find a resolution. You can't stop the stress, but you can master the stress. I will see you guys tomorrow, and we'll talk a little bit about the pause plan principle, and I'll give you more techniques on how to get connected to the heart and live your life in coherence. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on that mission by like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.